HarperCollins went ahead and uh, redid my book. And this is the book that they came out with. Same title, Dad Was a Carpenter. So HarperCollins had the book. I get to meet with my marketing staff. This is very exciting because I've been a one-man band up until now and suddenly there's eight or nine people sitting around a conference table. They're going to tell me all the amazing things they're going to do to make my book a bestseller. And I'm very excited. We walk out of the meeting with my agent and I turn to Joe and I say, are they really going to do this? He goes, absolutely, they're going to do it. Right up until the next big book comes. I said, well, how long is that? He said, well, two weeks. So you get a window of about two weeks for your book to either make it or break it. And one of the ways they wanted to make it was to spend probably $10,000 on a Father's Day ad in the New York Times, full page. It's an amazing ad, a wonderful ad, but when I heard about it, I about hit the roof. I said, you're kidding, right? I said this to both my editor and my agent. I said, you can't be serious because $10,000 for one ad in the New York Times, my audience is not reading the New York Times. Let's take that $10,000 and buy 30 ads across the whole country, especially in Des Moines, Iowa, and St. Paul, Minnesota, and San Diego, California. They said, well, that's where we're going to spend the money. And I turned to my uh, phone and called up my agent and I said, what is going on? He said, well, in the publishing business, the people behind the scenes, they like to be known by their peers for what they're doing. And so they always do ads in the New York Times. I said, wait a minute, so that ad that was placed in the New York Times was not placed to promote my book. It was placed to promote the people who worked on my book at HarperCollins. He said, basically. I said, well, this is nuts. And then he said the wisest thing I've ever heard and something that I desperately needed to hear at that moment. He said, Ken... It's their book. They can do what they want with it. I said, wait a minute, it's my book. He said, no, as you recall, they wrote you a check for it. You've cashed that check. Now it's their book. They're going to promote it the way they want. And I thought about that. And I realized that my book was a commodity. Just like a gallon of milk. Interchangeable. And with a shelf life. I thought, well, as it turns out, they did pay for my book and they paid me well. That is their book now. And although I'm saddened and almost sickened by what I would consider to be poor choices in how to market it, it really had very little to do with me. And I was in no position to call up the president of HarperCollins and rake him over the coals about it. I was a first time author. I had been extraordinarily lucky to win that award and uh, extraordinarily lucky to get a great agent and extraordinarily lucky to get a wonderful editor. And if they didn't market it in a way that served their best interests, i.e. making money back, that had nothing to do with me. So I was looking at Joe and Joe goes, you should get busy on your next book. So I did. Now, Dad Was a Carpenter did pretty well. And uh, some of the most interesting things about it were what it did in the foreign markets. You see, every year in Frankfurt, Germany, there's a big rights fair. Publishers from foreign markets buy the rights to republish the book. And you get a check, generally just a one-time fee. And you don't get royalties generally on these kind of things because they're taking the risk. They're going to publish it. You get uh, a paycheck up front, and they take the book to their marketplace. They took Gad was a Carpenter to the Frankfurt Fair and sold it in several markets. It was very interesting to me as I learned more about it. One of the first markets they sold it in, of course, was the Spanish market. And it, the book came out was Mi Padre Era Carpintero. Now, I speak fluent Spanish, and I oversaw the translation of the, of the book into Spanish, so I was pleased with it the way it turned out.
Several editions were published, one in Spain. Um, here's another version. I don't remember the market that this went into, but another Spanish-speaking market. Uh, also, while they were down there in South America, it also uh, made its way into a Portuguese uh, version, Meu Pai Carpintero. Um, each of these books very similar to Dad Was a Carpenter in that uh, they also had the graphics and it was laid out much the same way. And I was really kind of tickled and surprised that the book translated so nicely to all these other languages. The biggest surprise was South Korea. South Korea, I'm a hit in South Korea. It's, it's been sold to the South Korean market three or four times now. And each time uh, they come out with a different book. I'm not sure if it's a different publisher or not. Um, here's a version of the book here. Beautiful version with the folded uh, soft cover. Also with some of the, the coolest uh, graphics that I found in any version of it, a little bit bigger. Uh, don't speak Korean, so don't know how well they did on that. Here's another version of it. Reads from back to front. Um, also with some, some uh, very nice uh, graphics. And of course, it also reads uh, up and down. Um, and finally, here's maybe the nicest version. Dad was a carpenter and the Korean text. Hardcover and some marvelous graphics that I really came to love. Full color. Nice, nice, nice stuff. They really did a gorgeous job. And the book is selling well there. Quite a surprise because, again, it's such, a, it's such an American book by an American author about what I consider to be American concerns and situations. But uh, uh, perhaps it's uh, because of our military presence and our long time a good relationship with the South Koreans, that uh, the South Koreans themselves are so interested in uh, American books of this sort.